Absolutely. Thank well, you. thank you, Alex. Appreciate the thank time. You. Thank you. Let's bring in Democratic Congressman Denny Heck of Washington. He's a member of the Intelligence Committee. Uh, Denny, with a good welcome to you, and I just called you Denny as if we were totally buzzy congressman. I'm sorry about that. Your reaction <laughs> to that conversation? Well, first of all, I want to remind you, Alex, that the last time I read Article 1 of the United States Constitution, the advise and consent of responsibility is relegated to the United States Senate, not to the House. As a consequence, I didn't watch the hearings last week and the uh, interview during her confirmation hearing of Ms. Haspel. That said, I will say this. Uh, enhanced interrogation is not only morally unjustifiable, it simply doesn't work, and it's a good thing that we outlawed it. Were I a U.S. Senator, I would have some hard questions of her about her role in that. Mm -hmm. uh, that said, I think we should acknowledge her lifetime career of public service in very hazardous circumstances. I'd also, were I over there, want to have some conversations about, if not Ms. Haspel, who? Hmm. Uh, we can look around to the rest of the Trump cabinet and see some people who are so screamingly, manifestly unqualified to hold their positions. And frankly, I would include among that Scott Pruitt, who is the administrator for the Environmental Protection Agency and forgets the P in EPA. So <laughs> it's important that we consider someone will need to go there that has to undertake this awesome responsibility of help keeping us safe. Does she get confirmed? You've got Manchin and Donnelly, both Democratic senators now saying they support her. I mean, let's remember how close it got for Mike Pompeo with his confirmation. I predict that uh, Gina Haspel will be confirmed by the U.S. Senate. Okay. Uh, moving on to the Russia investigation. It's a big anniversary on Thursday, one year since Special Counsel Mueller was appoint appointed. I want you to put into perspective this year for us. When you think about it, it, it began with election meddling, possible collusion between the Trump camp and Russia, and now it includes payments to a porn star. Well, let's remember exactly where this began, Alex, because I, th I think it's important to go back over a year. This began with the administration denying that there was even any Russian interference in our election. Uh, we're way beyond that now. And as a matter of fact, notwithstanding the fact that the majority party has brought to closure the Select Committee on Intelligence in the House's investigation, Democrats continue their efforts, we continue to be treated to revelation after revelation. Uh, just last week, as you alluded to, the Michael Cohen slush fund. And if there is any stronger evidence that this investigation ought to continue, that is it. Uh, just this last week as well, minority Democrats uh, posted on the web the some 3,400 ads on Facebook that were purchased by Russians to interfere in our election. Uh, Facebook hasn't done enough in this regard. They're beginning to. But even with what minimal amount they are doing to correct their practices, they're doing way more than the administration is at this point. What about the numbers in a poll, a new one that finds uh, just 13 percent of Republicans who say the Mueller investigation is legit, 75 percent Republicans agreeing with the president. They say it's a witch hunt. If you look at the Democrats who are polled, it's, it's, you can flip it pretty much. But after a year, can you understand, sir, how people can be impatient, even if they've been given a number of things, circumstantially or otherwise? There is no clear statement from anyone that says, here is our evidence. Does this give critics reason to discredit the investigation? Alex, I disagree with your premise, with all due respect. There have been over uh, 100 charges filed for 19 individuals, four of whom were Trump operatives, two of whom were very high-ranking Trump operatives. Uh, collusion is hiding in plain sight. The fact that we have been at this but a year, frankly, put in historical perspective, whether you want to compare it to the Benghazi investigation, which I would characterize as a witch hunt, or previous investigations like uh, Watergate, most notably, mm -hmm. they often tend to take more than a year, especially when you start getting into the forensics investigation with respect to the money laundering things. They're very painstaking, and they can take quite some time. So I think in the broader historical context, we're not... Uh, beyond the norm at all. And furthermore, what I would say about those poll numbers is uh, obviously the Republican plan and the plan of the administration is working perfectly because from the get-go, their objective has been to discredit this, uh, dating right back to one day after the famous March 20 hearing in the House Intelligence Committee when Chairman Nunes went down to the White House to begin their close-knit collaboration on how it was, how they would proceed to thwart the Mueller investigation. Mm -hmm. So I'm not surprised by those poll numbers at all.
I have to say, um, to your point there, I, uh, in terms of the, the longevity and the historically speaking, I'm glad I was sitting down when I was reminded on this broadcast by Time Magazine's Jay Newton Small. The Ken Starr investigation took four years and one month. And I was reminded of that. that Oh, that's yeah. right. Anyway, they, um, let's... They tend to take long. They do. Uh, let's move to a, a crucial vote in the House this week, which is, it's the GOP Farm Bill, in which it proposes, proposes rather cuts to the SNAP food stamp program. And then you have the president who wants to slash, what, $7 billion in funding from the children's health insurance program. And I know you've been quite vocal about both these measures and, and how it could impact your constituents. But give me a sense of how many people will be affected by these cuts and what are Democrats going to do about it? Well, Democrats, including this one, are going to vote no. Uh, that fact notwithstanding, it's probable that it'll pass the House, although I don't know what the latest whip count is by the Republicans. Uh, that said, I don't think it's got much of a chance in the U.S. Senate. Uh, this is wrong on two bases, Alex. The first of which is the millions of people who are going to be harmed by it the millions of people whose quality of life, whose standard of living is already questionable and marginable, will be reduced even more. The second reason it is wrong is it breaks a more than half-century coalition of poverty advocates, people who advocate on behalf of those in poverty, I should say, uh, and the farming community. They've joined together in common cause to ensure healthy markets for farm products and at the same time ensure that people who are struggling to get by on a day-to-day -day basis have enough to eat. That coalition has been very important, and this represents a significant break in that. And that coalition, again, has existed for over a half a century. So I don't think it's going to ultimately be enacted by the Senate. I certainly hope not. And I'm going to vote no, and I'm going to vote no pretty loudly. Okay. I don't doubt it for a moment. Democratic Washington Congressman Denny Heck, thank you so much for joining me. It's always good to see you. Thank you, Alex. Coming up next, a report from Jerusalem ahead of tomorrow.